They just couldn't take the excitement. All right, give me a second before you fire that motor up. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I have some samples. I have the cutter. This is going to be, this is for case hardening. And just, see, it's really difficult to measure hardness on a, a geometry like this. So, especially since it's not that important, what we're going to do is we can compare it with the hardness of a file. And I know files are about 62 to 64 Rockwell C. Right. So, if the file uh, bites into the steel and cuts it, then I know I can tell it's it's softer than the than, than the uh, file. And um, with uh, a lot of experience, you can get pretty darn good at tell, pretty much estimating the. The rock will hardness by comparison with the file. What was the file, file grade again? File. This is uh, the file hardness is about uh, about uh, sixty two to sixty four Rockwell C. And so I can put a pretty. This bites in pretty good. So, but this this uh, hot roll pipe is actually pretty darn. <laughs> Hard. It's much harder than uh, like a uh, uh, just a, a hot roll plate like this. Now be careful what you touch around here. See that can really dig in. So this this is a bit hard, but it's not hard enough for what we're going to try to do with it. So we're going to try to we're going to try to case harden this edge here. Um, Same thing in free. Yep. Put a little bit extra water in it because I think it was uh, the it, w it wasn't uh, cooling fast. Now I got that. Put that over here so it don't catch fire. I have two other things in my pocket. So I have here. Who's I put my glasses on? I have the A2 piece that we. Um, attempted heat treat. We heat treated, and air. This is air cooled, and we just put it on the table like that, right? Mm -hmm. And but when we measured it, it only came out to be like, you know, forty something, right? Mm -hmm. Which is much lower than it should be, really. It should be in the sixties. The, the W, the W one steel that we, which is a high carbon, that we quenched, that was up to around sixty four. So this should be up there. So what we're going to do is somebody has to find me a plug for this thing. Piece of, well, it has to be such that I can get it over to here. I don't know, do we need a... Do we need an extension cord? Because what we're going to do is we're going to... We're just going to heat up the A2 again. Oh, no. Heat it up. And then we're going to uh, set it on the steel, and then I'm going to blow on it and get some air moving over it and try to increase the, the quench rate. All right. Now, this is a heat gun, but the temperature of this heat gun is, doesn't, is cool compared to what that steel is going to be. Great. Okay. So... Well, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I obviously don't need a blow dryer. And then I have a piece of low carbon steel that we tried, that we uh, heat treated, and it came out pretty low, like 30 Rockwell after, which is harder than I thought it would be. Which one was that? W? This, no, 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 no. This okay. is the low carbon. This is the lowest carbon. This is the 1008. 1008. Okay. All right, so we're going to case harden this, try case hardening this and see how we do with that. Okay, so let's see. This is the case hardening compound. Um, it's got, basically it's just, uh, it's, it's just a high carbon uh, uh, material. It has a lot of, of carbon 
they used to use just like graphite for this, like powder, and the problem with that is it's really messy, but it worked. And they would even take large steel pieces and pack them in a, a steel box so, and then and, and fill it with, um, put the part in it, fill it with uh, graphite, the whole thing, pack it in with graphite, and then put the whole thing in the furnace. Right. Good listen. <coughs> oh, yeah? This is the same guy did the same weld, and one of them completely just broke. He did the same weld, and all he did was, you can't tell, but there's a lot of slag in here. I thought I'd mention that. All right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, the, the same guy did the same well, the same heat and everything. One, he took so much extra time to clean in between his wells. And then... It just okay, so this, these are where he cleaned in between the welds, multi-packs welds. Mm -hmm. This one he was... He did and he left slag in it. Well, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't really pay attention to it. He just had... Half basket a little bit. So yeah. That's, I and think he, that's and you have it. Failure. Yes. And we can look at those. And this is a standard test. By the way. I mean, when you go to get your certification as a welder, you go through those kind of tests. Are you the one? And if and if it comes out like that, did my inventor flake? Flake. Test it. Was it? Um, flake, flake out. Yeah, okay, so let's see how we're gonna we're gonna proceed with this. Is I uh, want to do the A2 first. So let's. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know what? Could, is there a small piece of uh, sheet metal I can put some of this stuff on? This big. That's yeah, a little too small. I'm going to put most of them back. You know, I just roll it around in there. Oh, yeah, and then whatever's left, I put back in here. It doesn't bother it. So when it's heated up, you dip it in the carbide? We, we heat it, we dip it in there, and then we reheat it, and then we quench it. Okay. So let's do this first. Remember, I need a reducing flame so it has a long and we want some horsepower going on that so we don't have to wait all day. We got this thing. Cherry red. Sounds like a Um Is there a shop right around here? I can't I gotta be careful I don't put this in the wall at all. Ruin my heart spin. You want to go ahead? Or... Pardon me? You want to go ahead? Or... I want a reducing point. Crank up the uh, crank up the sub lane and then crank up the the action again. Just hold it over that. Let's just put some more horsepower on that. So I need more oxygen, more acetylene. But it's roaring. Yeah, I need to hear it. 
for the tail. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Oh, we forgot our. So, wow, what color does this have to be? White. No, sorry. White? No. <laughs> that happens right before it melts. Has to be cherry red. It has to be a fairly bright cherry red. Because remember, one of the reasons it could not have hardened up, we may not have gotten it hot enough. Can you turn on that uh, bow drawer? Well, I don't know if you remember last time, but the, it, it, it lost its glow faster. So that, hopefully we'll see if it's fast enough. You want to just put that out of the way for a second here? Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. So the next for the next one we need uh, we need that thing going good, okay? Because it's, uh, the time it took. I shouldn't these uh, the, the plier shouldn't get hot <laughs> because there shouldn't be enough time. But see, because it took so long to do it, plier's got it hot. No, let's get it roaring. I want to hear that thing. More oxygen. More oxygen. More oxygen. More oxygen. Not now. More. No more. Seven. More. More seven. More seven. More seven. More seven. Maybe we don't have to paint. I want to see tail on it. No, no, I want the oxygen where it is. I want more cylinder. Is that thing out? Did it get hot? Fires? Yeah. <laughs> Because if I can't, I'm not getting the right, it's just not doing it right. Okay, 
Do you have any more towels? And you know that that water increases uh, heat transfer, so you don't ever want to grab a hot thing with a wet rag because it goes right through it. The, the, the heat transfers right to the wet rag many times faster than if it's dry. Well, that's, uh, that sounds, it sounds good. I think that's right. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to do the, uh, this is the low carbon next. Here, just watch this. Heat that baby up. Don't melt it. That's not right. Yeah. A little bit closer. What is the power actually doing? It's actually providing a high carbon uh, material up next to the surface and, and actually at the high temperature the carbon will actually migrate into the steel. Okay. And then 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 it then the surface becomes a high carbon surface. So you're just adding material to it? I'm adding carbon to the surface. That's a what is it, A2 or this is a low carbon. Is that how it's done at the factory? Huh? Is that how it's done at the factory? Uh, it's done in usually sealed uh, containers. To, to, to add more All right, let's uh, yeah, okay. okay, all right, pull away. Well, okay, now for the main. Let's, uh, let's do the same the same flame. And now I, I don't I just want I want you to get this just this top edge good and hot. Well, I don't know what it is. It's your standard. It's a hot roll uh, pipe. Uh, schedule 40 pipes. Uh, actually, it's a little heavier than schedule 40. But schedule 40, pipe off your rack. Uh, I don't know how much carbon it has. In it. But I know that I can, I can scrape it with, I can cut it with a file. Get it down a little closer and get that down. Let's see. So maybe you might have to go sideways a little bit on it. Sideways.
today, you want to redo this, you're going to have to crank that, that porch up from it. The problem is, is that your torch is, that we don't have enough horsepower on that. Why don't, why don't you crank that baby up? So, because by the time you get around to this side, the other side is cooled off. flame so it has a long arm and you want some horsepower going on that so you don't have to move all this. Next time we're going to put some more So I don't know if you remember last time, but the, it, it, it lost its glow faster. So that, hopefully we'll see if it's that soon. You want to just put that out of the way for a second here? Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. Um,
What is the powder actually doing? It's actually providing a high carbon uh, material up next to the surface, and, and actually at the high temperature, the carbon will actually migrate into the steel. And then, then, then it, then the surface becomes a high carbon surface. So you're just adding material to it. I'm adding carbon to the surface. So that's a what is it, A2 or? This is a low carbon. Is that how it's done at the factory? Huh? Is that how it's done at the factory? Uh, it's done in usually sealed uh, containers. To add more All right, let's just, uh, yeah, okay, okay. All right, pull away. Well, okay, now. All right, let me see that. Get that torch going. Crank that, baby. Crank it. Crank it up some more. Now we're talking. Get it on the edge. 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 Get it Thank 
go around and check. Something like that. You got to have enough horsepower in your in your torch flame. Sometimes you need two torches. Sometimes you need a big rope. You know. So you got to pretty much stop babying the torch. Huh? Stop babying the torch. Yeah, because the longer you take with a process like this, that we have a reducing flame, but it's not really that in all encompassing. So you got oxygen coming in on it, and the longer it stays hot. The more oxidation you're going to get on it. So, yeah, we'll see um, how this works out. Here. Would it be better to do it a hardening testing with, I mean, with the actual um, furnace? This would have been this would have been better in a furnace or in a setup um, that could could hit the entire edge at once. Like a really big torch, or, or several torches, like you know, an array. Uh, what they would do in industry is they wouldn't use a torch at all. They would use it would be inductive. It would it would be they'd build a coil that would that would just fit in and uh, high uh, high frequency power supply, and would induce induce a current in that electrically. Uh, and it would it would glow red hot in like no time. And it's called inductive heating. And then and a lot of times it would do that and then it would just drop it would be an automatic process, it would hold it up there. It would take a it would take a ten seconds, fifteen seconds for it to heat and then it would drop it in the in the yeah. And and they would instead of dipping it in power like this, they they, they basically pre coat it. Right? But case hardening is done a lot, and it's done. There's a. It's done often as a, uh, a production as a production process. All right. So. So uh, he carbon can do the trick, or? Yeah, actually. What, what, do, you, what do you use? Uh, wood carbon, like uh, burnt wood and. Uh, that. Car like just charcoal out of your yeah. fireplace. Um. Yeah, you could probably get. You could, it would probably it's carbon. Yeah, it's carbon. What you need is a carbon source, and and yeah. Okay. So we missed the part whether we find out whether we did anything worthwhile or not. Yeah. <laughs> so <coughs> you can shut that down. You already are. Okay. Good deal. So you can see that it kind of makes a mess. I'm not. I've had some other nicer stuff than this that didn't clog up like this. But. Oh well. All right. So now we're gonna just and it skates. So, but if we ground that down, you know, twenty, thirty thousand to be soft. So you're going to get, for a process like this, you're going to get a depth, a case depth of 20, 10 to 20,000, 25. So how would you increase it? Just keep case hardening in the whole um, thing? Well, there's a limit because of, of it's a, uh, uh, it's basically a micro, um, diffusion process, right? And in order to get it really hard, um, first of all, let me back it up. You don't want to, there's a, a specific reason to case harden, right, rather than through harden. Rather than using a, a, you know, a high carbon steel and through hardening it,
Case hardening provides a, a hard, very hard exterior, but a tough, tough interior, right? So that in processes that you need just, you need the surface to be hard, like you're going to put a, it's going to be, uh, have bearings rolling on it, but you want, you don't want the thing to crack under a shock loading. That's the perfect, that's why you use case hardening. I mean, we, there's no point in trying to case harden something all the way through. You just, you would just get high carbon steel and, 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 and make your part out of that. The reason to case harden is to just, to have those two things in combined in the same part. A, a very hard surface with a, a, a softer, tougher interior for shock uh, loading. Whatever it is. Right? So, so is there a difference between the, the first time you filed it and now? Yeah, yeah, I should. I'll let you guys do it, but I didn't want to put Nick in it. Um, okay, here, I'll tell you what. Or to scrape it and now what? what All right, so let's, let's find a piece of something like that. Okay, so if you want to try it, this is uh, soft steel, and you can feel it the, the, the bite in. And then if you try the same thing on this, you'll see it skates off the surface. So it means that it's it's not, I mean, I can still nick it a little bit, so it's not quite, it's not 62 or 60, but it's it's much harder than it started out to be. And and, and you can actually check it with this. But we got this, we got that case hardening stuff all through here, so... It's, not, it's an imperfect, it was imperfect. Now, one thing we want to do now is, now, these are samples that we can test. So let's, I'm going to try to clean up here a little bit. So, if I buy some Walmart tools and then reheat those and put those things on there and harden it, what, it, what kind of tools are you talking about? Cutting tools? Uh, regular <laughs> a wrench. Wrenches, yeah. <laughs> no, they're already high heat treated. This isn't going to help you at all. It'll probably make it worse. Uh, now, if you get some really, really cheap, you know, if you get some really, really cheap sockets, flea market. You know that are yeah, flea market. <laughs> and if you can take a file and and cut into them really easy on a file, you could you could probably get them to be a little more durable. But you know what? By the time you spend doing this, could buy a new set. Buy a <laughs> decent set. Save yourself some time. So I'm going to leave this here. I'll tell you what, let's just, I'm going to tell uh, that we'll, I'll be back to clean up. But, uh, uh, let's see. Maybe we can, I don't know, I got water on this. It's square, so I don't know how much of this is actually saveable. I think it might be better off not just dumping it. So he was talking about slag on this one right here. The slag, thing. that slag from the, the rod. The, the coating? Of the the coating. All right. That this is multi-pass, so he put a root pass in, and then he you have to go in because the root, I mean, with stick welding, you have... Basically, the, the, the flux or the coating is uh, slag that forms over the top of the bead in order to protect it from oxidation, right? Right. And, right? and uh, it and fluxes the, the uh, Put in that metal fold. Fold. And then he, he didn't grind it all out. So then he welded on top of it. So there was, you know, inclusions and cracks and so, void. So every time you use this right here, put a, some sort of residue on the, the weld itself and... Yeah, well, well it, it actually floats on top when you when you use a rod like that. It, it actually the, the the coating acts as a fluxing agent. Plus, it, it floats on top of the weld pool. It's lighter than steel, so it floats on top of the weld pool, and it 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 keeps the the liquid uh, steel in this case from contact with the surrounding atmosphere. All right. So. Would it also be due to being the wrong, um, you know, AC and DC being an AC but running a 6010 run or a 6018? Uh, 
sometimes that's a problem, but he, he says that there it was uh, slag in there. So if you look at the break, you would probably see slag and blow holes uh, from the slag. He just didn't it too fast. No, he didn't clean it out. So yeah, after every pass. You have to uh, you cool off, then you have to get your grinder and you have to go in and get all that that slag out of there, right? And uh, really high end welding, there's, I mean, the, the actual welder doesn't do that. He's got a helper with a, that scarfs it out, right? And all he does is burn around. That's if he's, if, that's the high end guy. Okay, I'll tell you what, just so we can. Let's go over to the lab. I'm going to take this stuff with me so I don't have to do trips back and forth. Uh, and then we'll do A2. We give it a little extra cooling with the heat gun. Is that the first one? A2? A2. This is the first one we need. Better. <laughs> Let's see what else we got going on here. Hmm. Oh, that's not right. Ignore this one. This is this one doesn't work. Is that the same one? Uh, it's the same part. What's the date? Twenty-nine. Thirtieth. Thirtieth. Okay, ignore this, it wasn't done right, but we'll try it a little more. Here. A2, that was the high carbon, right? A2? A2, you ought to look it up. So, we improved it. I think we originally did it. It was came A2. Yeah, it came out at like 49. Huh? 49. 49? Yeah. Not much. So it's double. Huh? So it's like double. No. Two more. Or not really? Okay. No, well, just we oh, raised. Oh, oh. So, will we get 52 out of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, here is here's the low carbon with the low carbon. That I think we tested originally at around uh, 20, after heat treatment, after we just tried to heat it and quench it, it was 29, something like that. Yeah. All right, let's see what we do here. Right now we did three tests, then 35 and 34. What? <laughs> oh man. Well, what we ended up doing here is we didn't get it hot enough and we basically ended up just uh, annealing it. <laughs> All right, let's try it somewhere else here. 9.5. That's a failure. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's probably just what we did. We, we just didn't get it hot enough or quench it fast enough. And 27, 28. Uh, I think this uh, part is a little wobbly. It's one of the problems. 
again. Yeah. We're going to do it until we get what we want, right? We're trying to get over, what, 34? Well, see, there's another issue here is that if that hard, if that depth, right, is, is very shallow, then you will not get, this machine has to be set on superficial hardness. So it's a different scale. Um, but we should have gotten a fair amount of depth on this small part. So. <laughs> so that's it's uh, very very in, in, inconsistent so what I'm, I'm going to do one more set in stone huh set in stone uh, this, this, this what that was a failed that was a failed case hardening experiment so but what we're going to try just one more thing to see if um, so, we're so, gonna we're gonna try the. So the, what was the expected result on that one? It should have been up uh, close to sixty, high fifties. So that happens if you just overheat it. And uh, uh, if you over don't have, you, you don't you, you don't have enough compound on it, or you uh, uh, it doesn't heat thoroughly. In other words. We didn't get it hot, really hot enough. And you have to remember is that that co compound actually acts as a insulation too. So. so, case hardening with a torch like that is kind of an art form, you know. So I'm going to do it on on the side now. Yeah, I want you to pass this around so you know what we're doing here. Um, back of this second case. See, so yeah, because of the geometry of this, the um, uh, instead of a flat surface, roundness correction factors. It's gonna re it's gonna read low, just because it's round. Gonna, so the so when you do this, generally speaking, is that point five? Huh? Point five? The diameter? Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's it was. It's not seated right. See, so it's 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 moving around. Yeah, it looks like it's moving. So we're gonna. So basically, it's annealed. <laughs> right. I mean, we it was uh, either we did we didn't. Five point one. Yeah. Let's see if I can get one more decent one out of this thing. See this the the scale on this and everything. 
this interferes with this step too because it's not doesn't sit nice, real nice mm -hmm. on the in the anvil. Yeah, so this is basically a kneel. <laughs> Instead of rehardening, we actually, because uh, we got better results out of it just by just heating it plain and quenching it, right? Mm -hmm. So dud. Huh? The dud. Actually, that that kind of number for this as received about the same you know if you just got you know took this piece this is low carbon it's a low carbon piece and you know if you tested it just as it can't you know comes from the shop it'd be around that hardness so we in effect did not didn't do anything to it so if i took my tool and heated that thing up and went through all that process it could be like that also yeah if it doesn't if it's if the temperatures aren't right if you don't have it held yeah, you could make it worse. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I said that, you know, bench, flame, case hardening is kind of a, it's kind, it's kind of an art form, too. Could be the cooling, too, yeah. Could be the cooling that, that uh, because it had all that goop on it, that acts as an insulator, too. And then when you go to put it in a bath, it keeps the water away from it. So the, and you know how, if you look from, from our TTP diagram, you only have about a second or so to get down into the market cycle. So. That's it. That's it. Just try to remember what you saw. <laughs>